everybody. Um, I'm going to talk to you about a project I've been working on um, over the past few months and looking at sustainability in urban communities. Um, more specifically, I'm interested in how uh, nonprofit organizations uh, correct STEM in neighborhoods. And so uh, earlier this year, uh, me and a colleague sent a survey out to community based nonprofits uh, throughout all 50 states. Uh, getting a sense of how nonprofits um, define sustainability uh, at the local level, but also looking at what strategies they find important in developing sustainable communities. Uh, so I'm going to talk a little bit about that and, and my findings um, in our regression model uh, today. So essentially, when we look at sustainability, um, classic definition from Agumet, Willard, and Evans, um, they define it as a need to ensure a better quality of life for all now and into the future uh, in just and equitable manner uh, while living with the limits um, of supporting uh, ecosystems. Um, so really a general uh, idea of sustainability. Um, one cool thing we did in our survey is we really wanted to look at how nonprofit leaders define this. And this is important because uh, these community-based nonprofits work with low-income residents um, on a daily basis in trying to create safe neighborhoods. And we know traditionally when we think about sustainability, uh, we think about the three E's, we're looking at the economy, equity, um, and the environment. So these are just some of the quotes from the open-ended question we asked these leaders in terms of how they look at sustainability in their community. So one uh, executive director said, a uh, community with plenty of jobs and services for those that can help themselves. Uh, another executive director said, a uh, community that can provide opportunities to their citizens to earn a living wage, uh, has access to affordable housing and health care. Uh, one other executive director said, a uh, sustainable community is one that is less reliant upon federal resources to maintain the delivery of services to meet the needs of its low income and community at large. Now, we got close to 150 responses uh, from the survey in terms of these open-ended questions. And interesting fact that um, the nonprofits we, we looked at were community action agencies, and those are were given a mandate to focus on the environment, uh, whether it's homes and things like that. But what we noticed um, in this portion of the paper writing addressing this issue is that nonprofit leaders don't really focus so much on the environment when they're defining sustainability. Um, it's all about equity. So how can we get jobs to our to our residents and citizens? Um, how do we look at reducing crime in our neighborhoods? Um, how do we look at providing a living wage? And so while they do perceive the environment as being important, um, they have bigger issues on a local level. And so a lot of times, you know, going in and weatherizing the home is not just enough um, because that person sometimes has a drug house next door to them, um, there's high crime. And so what we're finding is that, that these organizations, even though they do provide a lot of um, environmental conservation programs, their attention is more so on the equity side in terms of how we look at sustainability. So again, just going back to classically how we look at sustainability, um, again, um, very familiar, this was developed in 1992, and again, when we look at the traditional uh, pin diagram of sustainability, uh, we first have the three E's, and we're looking at the environment, uh, looking at social, uh, looking at the economy. And again, we think about the environment section, we're looking at kind of like energy conservation, green building requirements, uh, looking at econ economic development, we're looking at infill development, brownfield development as strategies to addressing sustainability. Uh, looking at social equity, uh, we're looking at things like affordable housing um, or a mixed income neighborhood. So again, going back to kind of the qualitative side of our survey, um, again, if we redo this Venn, di uh, Venn diagram, uh, we find that the environmental and economic portion would be much smaller where the social one would be dominating. Um, again, the focus for these local uh, leaders is more so on how we help affordable housing and how we provide jobs and a living wage. Um, so again, just looking at the literature on uh, sustainable community strategies, uh, we find that most of the literature focuses on how local government defines sustainability, uh, but no one really has focused on how nonprofits define sustainability. And those are the ones who are really given the money um, and the mandate by the federal government and state and local government to go out actually implement these programs. So it's really important that we actually understand how they define sustainability since they're the ones who are actually on the ground at the grassroots level and are implementing these strategies. 
Um, we also find that a lot of these strategies are focused on economic and environmental issues. And where we find that the third E or the social aspect of the Venn diagram is really often not addressed in the literature. So again, um, I have a huge interest in community based on profits. Um, they have been in existence um, for eons. More specifically, they were created in the 1960s as part of the War on Poverty initiative under the Lyndon B. Johnson administration. And they were given a uh, mandate to go out and to address poverty on various levels. Uh, if we look more specifically at community action agencies, um, they were given a specific mandate to provide environmental conservation programs to low income neighborhoods. So, again, um, many of them, actually, every community action agency actually implements uh, some type of weatherization program. Uh, many of them um, also have, have moved towards more product. Uh, science of educating low income residents in terms of the importance of protecting the environment um, and, and also bringing climate change on their radar. Uh, but again, uh, C CAAs are a type of community based nonprofit um, that focuses directly on providing uh, environmental type programs to low income neighborhoods. So essentially, um, focus on two research questions. And the first one was what is the role of nonprofit agencies in creating sustainable neighborhoods? And next, what strategies do nonprofit agencies use in order to create sustainable communities? And I think it's really important that we understand um, what strategies they use to improve the uh, revitalization or work on revitalizing, uh, revitalizing urban neighborhoods. And kind of, you know, I think it's important also to, to see kind of like what, what they perceive matters to building sustainable communities, because I think we may have it all wrong. And so what I did is um, we sent out a survey to 800. Uh, community action agencies throughout the United States. Um, right now, our um, our response rate is close to 25 percent. Um, what I did is I used uh, OLS to examine how strategies for sustainability um, affect perceived organizational uh, effectiveness. So essentially, um, again, just we're looking at perceived effectiveness. So again, there may be some issues. Um, and, you know, later we, will, we may want to do some protective measures. But right now, I think it's important to kind of grasp kind of how these leaders perceive they're doing in building sustainable communities. So again, this kind of gives you a sense of kind of like who responded uh, to uh, the survey. And so we had um, quite a few um, in Texas and California, which is what we expected. Um, we had a lot on the Northeast, um, a, a moderate response rate um, in the Midwest. And of course, we looked up uh, in places like North Dakota, South Dakota, uh, New Mexico. Uh, we didn't get much of a number um, of responders in, in those states. But looking at a sample, 54% uh, of the uh, survey or respondents were in rural areas. 36% uh, were either uh, in uh, either both located in an urban or rural, and 10% actually uh, served urban areas. So again, uh, the sample we looked at here had a huge response um, from rural areas. Uh, so again, um, these are just my independent variables that I used um, in the model. And so again, I broke it up uh, according to uh, the literature and how they define uh, sustainability based on three E's. And so we looked at environmental protection initiatives, uh, economic development initiatives, and also social justice and equity initiatives. So for example, um, under the environmental initiatives, we looked at things such as whether or not they use healthy home programs um, as a strategy. Uh, whether or not they use environmental conservation and education programs as initiatives. Under the economic development uh, initiatives, we looked at whether or not they have clustered or car, car based economic development. Uh, we looked at whether or not they promoted mixed use development. Uh, under the social justice and equity initiatives, uh, we looked at things such as senior care housing, mixed in, uh, income communities. Uh, we looked at things such as crime prevention and job training. So, uh, looking um, at the results, uh, we found that things such as environmental conservation, education program was an important predictor of perceived organic effectiveness. A healthy home program was um, also an important predictor. Um, nothing um, under economic development initiatives. Uh, we found that under our social justice and equity initiatives, uh, that senior care housing was an important predictor. Uh, we found that. Um, Community indicators and also crime prevention programs were important predictors of whether or not they perceived they were successful in building 
uh, the thing that we use. So in a sense, we fought a little heavier um, on the uh, social justice equity uh, initiatives. We also find um, also whether or not they received government funding as a point predictor of how effective they were in answering the technical needs. So again, um, we're working on different multivariate analysis. This is just preliminary findings because of how we're looking at how nonprofits are working in critical neighborhoods. But again, we find, uh, even on the quantitative side, that social justice and equity initiatives are really at the forefront of how uh, nonprofit leaders really think um, or how they define building a sustainable community, but more so uh, what strategies they think are important to, to create sustainable communities. So, just um, in conversation, uh, implication and, and conclusion um, nonprofits will always play an integral role in creating sustainable. Uh, Communities. Uh, findings suggest that nonprofit organizations are filling the social equity gap. Again, as I mentioned earlier, uh, not much on literature in terms of how nonprofits address the social equity issue, but also even government, um, as it's always been focused on the environment um, and the economy. Uh, also, cities are to make progress on sustainability, crop protection, crop growth, and other environmental areas. Uh, then, local nonprofits uh, are an important, uh, important uh, uh, person to have at the table in terms of how we do it. Again, um, even though we know the environment is really important, uh, climate change is very important. Again, you know, when we go into low income neighborhoods, um, you know, their their thinking is very different in how we're thinking of eating dollars. So I think this this research kind of really opens our minds up to understand how we can address sustainability um, in local communities. Questions? So a lot of community-based nonprofits um, build senior housing um, in low-income neighborhoods. Um, senior housing is, is, is an issue in a lot of um, cities across America. Um, and one of the first things that uh, community-based nonprofits do, they always focus on building uh, senior housing as a, a, a tool in addressing um, housing for seniors. So it's like a place like New York City. New York City is a prime example. A lot of community development corporations Built a lot of senior housing, but I think um, so. A lot of these leaders they, they view uh, senior housing as being really important to create sustainable neighborhoods. Um, and the issue is, a lot of times uh, we know senior citizens are on a fixed income, um, and so a lot of these uh, senior housing are rent controlled, where they can afford uh, to live a little bit higher. Yes. Not 
and it's not really in your business. And it's only in your business, how it's going to be. And, and it is with many of those programs, uh, even the sister unit, they're done here in the Houston area. I mean, all you're doing is you're, you're displacing the working room. Um, and so, you know, at, at the end of the day, gentrification, you know, they're coming. So essentially, you know, you have these areas dominated by minority groups. What happens is those will come in, they do it, and then now these uh, individuals are, are displaced like North and East Lubbock. And even though the property rates have gone up, everything's great, um, all you've done is displace poverty through other sex activity. And so even though those may be perceived as great programs, uh, they didn't help African Americans or even Latinos in any way. Um, all you're doing is shifting it for them to some other areas. And so we're, we're still dealing with this issue of poverty, uh, relative housing, um, and things like that, just because, um, you know, like I said, of the negative of things like gentrification. And a lot of programs like Model City is another area program that really focused on low income black neighborhoods because it's more people of color in black neighborhoods. And even though uh, the perception is that the one housing industry was a success, uh, they did more damage to African American communities um, than they did good. How does this fit into the broader scheme of combined wealth capitalism? Good question. Um, again, um, you know, we spent a lot of time, we presented this in, in, in Detroit um, a couple months back. Um, and the issue is that, um, you know, we, we talk about ecosystems and um, we talk about a lot of the conservation, but again, that's not how we did sustainability in the city. Um, now, I think that we've been looking at sustainability the wrong way, um, and I think that there needs to be a big push more on terms of how we look at equity, ways to look at equity, and justice in these communities and these neighborhoods. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, I was just, uh, I was just wondering, have you seen a correlation between some of these environmental issues and say pushes for urban homesteading or community gardens within urban and also rural communities? I have. I actually have a variable for community gardens. Um, I didn't get anything on it though, but no, um, uh, definitely uh, in a lot of uh, the neighborhoods, and actually a lot of community action agencies actually um, sponsor community gardens uh, throughout the year. So again, um, you know, that, that's also another piece of criticizing. Your, your responses, I think you said, were much, many more responses from uh, rural areas than from urban areas. But as far as the, the distribution of poverty, that's much more of a city issue. No, I mean, rural, I mean, poverty is, um, you know, rural areas are probably one of the most underpaid um, places. Mm -hmm. um, and they suffer from poverty just like big cities. Um, we just don't talk about it. Yeah. Um, and a lot of the uh, community action agencies serve a lot of rural counties uh, throughout the United States. And a lot of them were plagued with congestion issues like affordable housing, um, you know, addressing things like energy price and community accountability programs, um, you know, building student housing and other issues too. And so poverty is, is just as bad in rural areas as it is in urban areas. So it's it's reasonable to just look at the majority of weighting from all of right. yeah. 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 Thank you Thank very you. much.